Hi, and welcome to episode six of the Creator's Guide, South Africa's Guide to Doing Business in the Creative Industries. This is our second episode that we're shooting in lockdown, and I'm really excited to introduce you to our guest. His name is Francis Chowler. He's an established actor and entrepreneur, and today he's going to be talking to us all about saving as a freelance creator. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Francis. I'm a freelance actor and an entrepreneur and I'm going to talk to you today about managing your income, your expenses and particularly around how to save when you have an erratic income as a freelancer. Uh, these principles are mainly focused at those running a one-man business um, generally in their own capacity and not necessarily a registered business but anyone can take um, can take from from these strategies which I've, I've drawn over the years from the fantastic personal finance community and adjusted for the needs of those of us who earn income um, quite erratically and often don't always know how to manage that process so today I'm going to focus on four key areas that's understanding your income understanding what you spend saving and investing in your business, your stability, and your future. So, to get started, understanding your income. So, this sounds obvious. In fact, everything I'm going to say is pretty obvious. It's the implementation that really is key here. And this is where understanding your own personal relationship to money, your avoidances, um, is really important. So, ultimately, it's a personal journey, and um, I really encourage you to be gentle with yourself and to take things in small bites uh, and really integrate habits gently uh, and with awareness that this is hard it's easy to say and it's much harder to implement so first of all understanding your income I work as an actor and sometimes I make a big check and then sometimes I go for months without any income so it's really important that I know what's coming in so that I can know how scared I need to be or how much I can relax. Uh, There's a joke, but, but it's really important for me to know what the next few months are looking at. So keep a notebook, a notes app or a spreadsheet, or if you are more advanced in, in, and you have many clients that you invoice, use a system, a free system like WAVE, W-A-V-E, um, which is a free accounting system which works really well for freelancers. But have some system where you note down every time you get a job that is confirmed that you know is going to pay, you write that down, who the who's comes from, whether they're deducting any tax, what the gross amount is, if there's an agent or intermediary that's taking a commission, and what the amount is that's going to hit your bank account. Uh, if you ever apply for a home loan or something like that in the future, it's these records that you're going to use to 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 justify your income along with the bank statements which must match. So it's good to get in the habit early on of having really clear records of exactly how much uh, is coming in. And this is where my first um, bit of advice for freelancers comes in and that is I encourage you to have an annual view. So instead of, because it may be quite discouraging to see, oh well next month there's no money coming in. I like to look at my income over a full 12 month period. I use the tax year, even if you're not yet earning enough for tax, that's 1 March to 28 or 29 February. And I would encourage you to just list the whole income for the whole year and work out what it is that you made in the last 12 months. If your income is highly seasonal, like those who work in the film industry, I would encourage you to make sure that those six month, that six month period includes both a high season and a low season. This annual view helps you sort of iron out the, um, the seasonal differences and also the times where a lot of work comes together and, and the droughts. It's very tempting um, when work's going well to spend that money and having an annual view um, helps you to understand that even though I may have had a good three months we don't know what the next three to six months is going to be. Uh, if you actually look at how much you made in the last 12 months 
uh, you may be surprised um, at how much it is. Um, or you may be very disappointed at how low it is, in which case you're still beginning. And what's great about a low base is that you can jump really high from that the next year and the year after that. So once you have an annual view of how much you made in the last year, it's time to start understanding what you spent. If you earned 100,000 in the last 12 months, for example, how much went to your basic living expenses? Again, do this on an annual basis and don't agonize about it. It doesn't have to be every little thing. It's the big expenses. What did you spend on rent? Do you have a car? What is it? What do you spend on that? It may be a lot more than you imagine because you've got to take into account services, maintenance, fuel, insurance, if you're paying it off, which I encourage you to pay off fast if you are paying it off and ideally never buy a car financed. Um, and then your basic, do you have any insurances? Uh, what do you spend monthly on groceries? Just just have a look at your bank statements, but don't agonize on it. Just jot it down, in, uh, scribble down on a piece of paper, but look at it at an annual view. So say say you need 10,000 Rand a month to pay all your basic expenses. That's 120,000 a year. So that should be your goal for the next 12 months. So you write that down. 120,000 is my goal. Now I'm going forward. Every time I get a job, I get a 10,000 Rand job or I get three 2,000 Rand jobs. I write down, I reduce that 120 goal by whatever that job is bringing in. So now I only need to, I only need to save, I only need to bring in 110,000 Rand. And as you go through the year, there'll be times where you knock that number down faster and there'll be times when you're not reducing that number at all. The point is, is to use this system as a way for you to prevent yourself overspending when the times are good and then having nothing when the times are not good. I, I do this for, uh, I encourage you to start with a six month period. I do it for a, a rolling 12 month period and I just work, work, work until I know I can see that at the end of the 12 months I will um, I can pay all of my expenses for the next 12 months. I know that I have money to invest in my business or to go on holiday when that money, when the money that's coming in starts to exceed that basic amount. Then I can start allocating that money. I can start making provisions for savings contributions uh, that then become monthly contributions or I leave it aside and then I make annual contributions at the end of the year. So, from there, we're going to go on to saving. Now, this is a real challenge for many freelancers because it sometimes can just feel like there is no money to spend. The living expenses exceed the money that's coming in and the living expenses increase while the, the um, drawings or your earnings are what you're able to charge isn't able to increase. And I, I really understand that from myself. But what I'd like to encourage you is that it is not about how much you are able to save. It's about a discipline and a savings habit. So on that note, many people with an erratic income struggle with the idea of a monthly debit order to a savings um, um, to some sort of savings product or even just into a savings account. So to combat that, which I understand, as I said, there may be three months where there's no new money coming in. And it's very difficult to let go of money that you have in your account because you may need it. So what I encourage is that you decide on a percentage. Maybe in the beginning it's just 5%. And every time an invoice is paid, the minute it hits your bank account, you take whatever that percentage is, say 5%, and you route that into a separate account. Most bank accounts, Capitec, FNB, have savings pockets or, or additional savings account in your main banking profile where you can move funds. If you feel like it's going to be too tempting for you to take this, and this is where self-knowledge and is very important, put that into a 32-day notice account. It's important to start in a manageable 
um, with a manageable percentage. If you are only just getting by each month, start with five or less percent of each invoice. But make the decision before you even know you're going to make money. Make the decision before the commission gets given or the job gets given to you so that as soon as you even have a hint that that money's coming in, you know that ah, I'm only going to actually have 90% of it. 10% is going to go into this fund. And then, as I said, the day it hits your account, you have to transfer it. This builds discipline and it builds commitment to your own stability and ultimately investing in yourself as a business and beyond that investing uh, for your own financial stability in later life. But you have to start with the actual commitment to do it and then you have to reinforce that by doing it every time an invoice comes in. And some people earn 500 Rand at a time, doesn't matter, you go onto your online banking and you've transferred that 50 Rand each time the 500 comes in. I encourage you to look at Time Bank, Time Bank, T-Y-M-E, or Capitec. Time Bank uh, offers a very favorable interest rate of up to 10%, and they have goal save accounts which you can uh, allocate different things to. The primary thing to save for initially is an emergency fund. Do not worry about investing and growing your wealth until you have a solid emergency fund. I have an emergency fund that can cover six months of no income of my basic expenses that gives me a cushion to sit on it gives me peace of mind and i cannot overestimate what a difference peace of mind makes when you are working job to job and you don't know even if this production company is going to pay you or fold before they pay you so that that cushion is the basis on which your entire financial success is built because it means that when you are first of all it means you can weather down times like now uh, but it also means that if an opportunity comes where you get to do the thing you really really want to do with the people who you really want to work with and it's gonna it's gonna move your career a big step forward in the right direction but it doesn't pay a lot it means you can take that opportunity because you have provided yourself this fund. Another way to think of it is to have two separate funds. So you have an emergency fund that's only for emergency or, or, or no work. And you have another fund that's for investing in your career. This is particularly good if you have a career that is equipment heavy, like you're a photographer and you need to invest in equipment. Then I recommend if you're able to 10% to an emergency fund and 10% to a fund that goes to that's available to you to invest in your career in equipment in training opportunities maybe even in travel opportunities particularly if you're an, if you're an artist uh, opportunities to um, to do residencies overseas can really move your career forward but you need to before you can even think about that you need to build up a fund and really encourage you to think of saving as a way of empowering yourself to invest in yourself as a practitioner as an artist and grow your business it's only through the discipline of saving that we can ultimately reach the goals that we want for ourselves as artists thank you so much for tuning into this episode we hope that you learned some valuable information please remember that if there are any topics that you'd like us to cover you're welcome to drop them in the comments below or you can get a hold of us and remember also to click that subscribe button and the bell icon if you want to get notifications for all our videos that come out we do have a whatsapp line that you can now contact us on we'll put it somewhere up on the screen so that you can get our number please feel free to send us a text let us know your suggestions ask us questions if you have any questions about what it is that we do or you need some guidance in terms of your creative career we are here to support the creative community you're welcome to contact us on social media our social media handle is at that underscore network za and our website is www.that-network.za looking forward to seeing you in the next video